like to call this uh, regular meeting at 6 p.m. for the city of San Juan. <coughs> May we rise for invocation? <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem, Jesse Ramirez, can you lead us in the invocation, please? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all your blessings, your guidance. Help this uh, commission, this uh, board, to make the wise decisions that it affects our city and all our employees and keep all those in the Houston area and the Florida area safely and they may, may find your blessings and help in, in their area. In your name we pray, God. Amen. At this time, uh, under public comments, we have Mr. I'd like to see maybe we can get the uh, agenda out of order uh, and go with discussion and possible election on all the following matters, Section 8 and uh, uh, Section J and K, as Mr. Navarro is here present, and he's got a previous commitment, and if we can, uh, uh, Section 8. J, J and K. J and K. Mr. Navarro. And, and the items uh, reads as consideration and appropriate action, if any, under Section 174.102. Uh, Texas Local Government Code to recognize an association selected by a majority of the firefighters of the Fire Department of the City of San Juan as exclusive bargaining agent for the firefighters of that department related matters. And I just read uh, item K, apologize for that, but it's not J. And then J is consideration and appropriate action, if any, under section 174.102, Texas Local Government Code to recognize an association selected by a majority of the police officers of the police department of the City of San Juan as exclusive bargaining agent for the police officers of that department and related matters. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. I, um, I don't have my copy of the agenda. Can <coughs> we scroll down to those two items? So um, what we're here for today is that um, the next step in the bargaining process <coughs> is for the city council to 
recognize a majority bargaining agent for the two civil service groups, your fire department and your police department. That process is typically done through <coughs> a uh, petition or some kind of communication reflecting to you that a certain union is going to be the majority bargaining agent and that a majority of the firefighters and police officers respectively have want that group to be their, their agent. Um, sometimes <coughs> it can be controversial because especially on the police side, there's more than one union that operates. Uh, there, I, there are, I know, of two unions that have been active in the city of San Juan uh, Police Department. But it's not always that way. Sometimes the unions make agreements or arrangements between and amongst themselves about either taking turns or sharing the power or whatever it is they do. In any event, um, there is no competing petition here. You have one petition from the uh, police union, and I believe it's the cleat-based group um, <coughs> that's on the petition. Um, I have worked with your HR staff to make sure that all the names on that petition are current employees, uh, sworn police officers and that the signatures are validated and there is a majority of signatures there uh, for that union. And on the fire side, um, there's really only typically one union that operates uh, in the state. And so the representatives from that union have also communicated with management and indicated that they will be the majority bargaining agent for the firefighters. So the two items are not controversial. Uh, had there been, there's another procedure that would kick in to determine uh, who, who the majority is, is, but we don't have that going on here, thankfully. <laughs> and so um, I'm here to just recommend to you that all of that process has been handled properly. The unions have submitted their paperwork properly. The counts are validated. And so I'm recommending that you recognize the uh, majority bargaining agents specified in the petition for the police. That's going to be uh, the, uh, let me see if they have their, do they have their name listed on there on that petition? The professional, law the professional law enforcement person, okay. San Juan Professional um, Enforcement Association, which is the CLEAT based group, correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. So we're recommending that you go forward and approve that. This is a ministerial function, really, at this point, as long as there's no controversy. And the same with the uh, with the firefighters. Mr. Navarro, you had mentioned that there was two unions in the police? There are two active unions in the Rio Grande Valley, and both of them are active here in San Juan. One is a Texas Municipal Police Association. The other one is a CLEAT-based group. I'm aware that both of them have members or have a presence here. Uh, in a number of the other communities where we provide representation, sometimes there's, uh, the, it shifts, the balance shifts from one to the other. So, so that's not happening here. Is each uh, union gonna have their own agent? I, qu I quite didn't. It's kind of our, uh, our elections, okay? Oh. Between Democrats and Republicans, okay? You may be a, a Democrat, but once the, election, the president is elected, that's your president, okay? So it's the same, the statute says, there's only one bargaining agent, so the members vote for or select or sign a petition for one or the other union, and whichever union has the majority of signatures of, of either officers or firefighters, as the case may be, that is the majority bargaining agent, and that's who the city will deal with in collective bargaining negotiations. So that agent represents everybody, in the group, regardless of whether they voted for them or not. As long as there's a majority of officers or a majority of firefighters that have supported that group, that's the group. So uh, there's, we don't deal with multiple unions. We deal with one union at a time. They have the ability to change if they want. At a later point in time, there's a procedure where they can change unions if, if they want. But that is something that the members handle on their own. That's their own internal process and politics. We only have to deal with whoever the majority is. 
and that makes it a lot easier to, to handle negotiations because we only have we deal with one representative, and that's the way the statute is written. It's written for a purpose to you know keep things clean, and, and so it's it's kind of uh, it's democracy at a at a very local level. Thank you, sir. Okay, that was uh, also. Hold on, Mr. Navarro. I noticed that on the executive session on A1. Yes, sir. What are we going to do? You're uh, that was just in case there was a I had asked that that be included in there in case that there was another competing petition that was filed where it would, might create a question about who the majority was. And so out of an abundance of caution, I asked that that be put there so that I could give you some legal advice about how that worked. But since that didn't happen, there's no need to have an executive session. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Thank you. Sir. Thank Can you. Can I be excused, sir? Yes. You may. Right. Thank you. Legal counsel, legal counsel, have you gone through the process already on, on looking at this information? Yes. Um, I, I, again, they're just uh, asking that we recognize. Is it recognize or acquiesce to the the? Just recognizing that recognizing the agent per union. Is that correct? Per the statute. That, that's all. You, per the statute. That's all you're asking that's for. That's all we're. That's all we're doing. Yeah. The the city council has to recognize. So, specific union. so if there's any action taken here, it only would be to to acquiesce or to recognize the agent per statute. The per statute that was voted by the majority of of the members of the union. You're just recognizing them. There's there, we're not working out a, a collective bargaining agreement at this time. We're just no, basically that, that's recognizing a, who's going to speak for the union, for the firefighters and police department. Right. You're sure recognizing their representative, their exactly. official representative. And so it will be the president of the union that gets recognized. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure that you're following what's going on and we make sure, you know, because I'm going by your recommendation. Yes. And I believe you're familiar with a similar process in the meeting confer and, and in, other, in other communities. So, I mean, so we're just taking a very small step here. Uh, when, when we get around to the actual bargaining, we will be getting a notice from each of the unions, and at that point, we'll come back to you about that process. But that probably won't be for, for a little while. Any other questions? No? OK, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Navarro. We need to vote for this item. So if there is a motion made by this board, it would be only be a motion to recognize the bargaining agent for the police officer of the department on related matters. Um, right now, there's not a name um, for each of the agencies. Do you have? Is there, has there one been selected already? Petition. It's uh, San Juan Professional Law Enforcement Association. You could you could either just make a, a motion just to recognize the agent as selected by the by the union, and not have to necessarily name his name, uh, because so he, would, he would be the, recognizing he would that that he there's one agent. Agent. Exactly. He's, he's the representative that we or he's representing for right now. One agent for the police department. You have one agent for the fire department. That's too. correct. One. Now, yeah. instead of recognizing the name, we could just recognize the agent because I'm sure there'll be other elections as time pr uh, progresses, and yeah, it could be the same or somebody at else. Any time exactly. or, uh, so we could, we different don't things to. can happen. Mm -hmm. They can either the officers can say, "Well, we want to go with a different union," and they can do that through their own procedures, or officers can get on this board. They can vote out members of their board, the CLE board, and and change out officers. They can check a, a different president. They can select a different president. They can make changes internally. Okay, we we the city, since I work for you, <laughs> we we don't need to concern ourselves with the internal workings of the unions. We just need to know which is the the president now and which is the majority agent. Right now, the officers have submitted a petition saying 
we want the San Juan Professional Law Enforcement Association, which is a clique-based group, to be our bargainers. And all we need to just say, fine, let's give you this. And with the firefighters, it's uh, the local, local 4697, local 4697 IAFF, local 4697, yes, San Juan uh, uh, Firefighters Association. Double F, San Juan Professional Association of Firefighters, Local 4697. Our concern is not, you know, that we have to worry about it. It's that we want the public to know and be informed what decision we're taking. We just had somebody that made a comment on, on that, you know. Uh, you know. So we just want to make sure that the public also knows that, you know, we are concerned and where we're going to go. We're here to work with you guys because that's what it is. But, you know, we got to ask the questions, and that's why we get concerned about it. Yeah. Good question. First time for some Juan to go yeah. through this process. So. And, and, and just on uh, Commissioner, in regards to those signatures, it's both unions. Uh, we're both working together in conjunction, and I mean, we pretty much have the, the, the same mission in moving forward and, and working with. You them. know, and, and I'm not worried about the signatures. I think, you know, the, the public has spoken and they went out and vote, and you know, we got to respect their, their decision, and they made the decision. You know, so now they already voted, so we have the unions and we have to, but since it's new, we want to make sure that human resources and that our attorney are guiding us the right way so we can take it forward and, you know, and work with you in, in good, you know, you know, you guys are the ones who can protect us and we want to make sure that you're happy and that we're working hand to hand with it, you know. So. By the way, on, on the documentation regarding the, the vote that was taken and all that, we have all of that. Do you want the motion to, re, to, to be stated as to, to, to uh, recognize the San Juan Police Officers Association as the bargaining agent for the police department? What we're going to do is make a motion to recognize a bargaining agent for the police officers of the department or the police officers unions and then also to a motion to recognize a bargaining agent of the firefighters uh, union also. Um, without stating, without stating their names because it, okay. it could very well change you know, right. next month, next year, and so forth. So without stating their name, just basically saying that we're going to recognize so their agent. If it were to change, right. we would come back. They would have to come back and, and notify us. So right now, you just recognize them. From right. So the motion on the table would be to recognize the uh, bargaining agent for the San Juan Police right. as submitted for the, for the petition. So that's the motion. <coughs> Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. The second would be to recognize the uh, fire, fire. bargaining agent for the fire department as well. The union. Uh, union right. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you so much. Mayor Commissioners, on the presentations, we have a presentation by the San Juan Royal Court and the San Juan Community Alliance Club on the upcoming pageant event scheduled for Sunday, October the 8th, 2017. And we have um, our very own Miss Ida San Juan. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Oh, good evening, rather. <laughs> well, my name is Gwyneth. Um, I am your Miss San Juan 2017. Um, just a little, uh, not typo that we had, but we have moved the pageant from October 8th to October 15th. Um, we extended one week in order to have, uh, to give more girls the opportunity. School's just starting, um, so we want to go to the elementaries, you know, kind of promote this and uh, give them, everybody an equal opportunity to get to this pageant. So we have our Little Miss San Juan, which is going to be for first graders, uh, Miss Teen San Juan, which is sixth graders to eighth graders. We have added um, kind of a junior Miss San Juan. Uh, which we do have one for now. It's going to be from freshmen to juniors. And then we have our Miss San Juan, which would be my age, um, from seniors to 22-year-olds. So um, mainly we're just promoting this pageant. Uh, me, personally, I've learned so much. Um, my self-esteem has grown so much, you know. I've always been okay with public speaking. I've always been okay with, um, you know, volunteering of course things that we do um, but this time it's just to another level you know now you have a, a sash now you have a crown now you have a whole city to represent so before when I would volunteer in the high school it's just you know 
um, PSJ High School, Fogorico, PSJ High School, Mariachi, and now it's more like the city of San Juan. So um, I just want to say that on my behalf, it's been an honor to represent the city. Um, it's been an honor to get to know each and every one of you personally um, throughout the events that we've had. Um, anybody who's watching online or any of the girls, any uh, nieces that you know, daughters, granddaughters, uh, we invite them to join this. Um, it's, I want to say it's not just a friendly competition, but it's also in a way a movement. You know, This is something that we haven't had in the city for a couple of years, so getting to start up that like getting to start that up again it's just truly been an honor um having little girls see you from several events from the easter egg hunt we see another girl a couple weeks back and they recognize you so you're making an impact in the city you know and um from the bottom of my heart i just want to thank you all you know uh, seeing here living in this beautiful city for 19 years and then just getting to hold that title to represent um also letting it be known that I actually got invited to be a judge at the Miss Wesico pageant. From there, I met um, a couple who was actually the directors for the Miss USA and for Miss America. Um, and I got invited to be a judge in Laredo, where there there was people from around the nation. You know, these girls get to compete, so our name was definitely out there. You know, the city of San Juan, a city that not that many people have heard of. So um, this is truly an opportunity to just um, get to expose our city, get to volunteer, and just get to represent in the best of our abilities. So I'm going to have um, Miss Teen San Juan Jr. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Melissa Lugo and I'm your junior Miss San Juan 2017. And I also wanna say how great it has been to be crowned junior Miss San Juan 27 back in 2017, back in December, because it has brought nothing but happiness and joy to my life because I love this city and I, it's been an honor to represent this city in many events. And I wanna say that, that it has boosted my self-esteem, my self-confidence, I feel better about myself and I believe that every girl should have the opportunity to feel that way which is why I encourage you uh, to keep the title Miss San Juan and the pageant Miss San Juan alive for many, many years because I feel that every girl from first graders to 22 year olds to be able to feel the way I felt this past few months and to represent the city they love. And thank you, that's it. And now uh, our little Miss San Juan. I'm gonna move the mic yeah. a little bit, sorry. <laughs> I'm Victoria Benavides from San Juan, 2017. What was your favorite thing from the pageant? My favorite thing from the pageant was the Easter egg hunt because we saw a lot of kids there and for being our first time doing something big, there was a lot of people there. And uh, just to add on to that, you know, we're barely starting up again, but like Victoria said, her favorite for sure was the Easter egg hunt. That's something that the city itself has never had. We have our high school doing that. We have our middle schools participating with it, but we never had something like open to the city publicly. So we started off, uh, we even came here and asked you guys for support on that. And thank you so much for that. Once the event actually took place, it was kind of mind blowing how we had a week and a half maybe to plan everything and then you see kids running around you see parents having fun you know so we want to thank you also for the support that you gave us for that event that it was I thought it was a great event I, I was there I took my four-year-old and uh, she wanted to take a picture with and she even talks about it now <laughs> we passed by Carmen she's like that was our Easter egg hunt yeah because she knows the area and I took pictures with the princesses right <laughs> you know and we got the pictures uh, that she took with you guys so I appreciate that and I thought it was a great event and I want y'all to keep and growing that you know every year so good job thank you the proud dad I'm representing <laughs> representing the San Juan Community Lions Club and this is our big uh, fundraiser uh, event um, so we, we're asking for contestants for the event and also for sponsors. If you know of anybody that would like to, to sponsor uh, the event, we will appreciate it. Uh, if you had asked me two years ago, I would be involved in beauty pageants. I would have, <laughs> I would have told you you're crazy. Uh, but it's been, it's been fun. Gwen is uh, my daughter, and she gets her good looks from her, her mom, of course. Uh, oh, that, yeah. uh, Mr. Cervantes, so, how, uh, I, I've been noticing around town that they have some flyers in, on these fence lines and it's very visible and, and that's real nice. Uh, but how else are you promoting it other than going to the schools or is it on the website? And We have a Facebook, Facebook page uh -huh. for, the, for the Queens. And we have a Twitter 
Twitter page, Instagram page, and we're like individual social medias. We're also posting pictures and promoting it. Putting good, the good, link good. Up there so people can just click on it and start registering. Great, great. So Facebook, please uh, like. Yes, yes sure. uh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> and, uh, and you said the date. You changed the date. Fifteenth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And for we're, your you're gonna get some complimentary tickets. Uh, you're gonna get two tickets each of you, and we ask you to be there, please. Yes, because it's, with, a, it's a very with, neat event. With your checkbook, man. <laughs> no, no. no, but uh, it's, a, it's a very neat event, so you, you want to be a part of it. You want to be there. Definitely. Yes. Uh, so you're going to get a couple of tickets. Uh, Compliment. Thank you so much. A quick and keep question, up the good work. If I may, Mayor. Go ahead, go ahead, sir. Yes. I, had a, I had a parent ask me today. Their daughter attends a San Juan school, but they don't live in San Juan. Where do they get this information as to what? Must be a San Juan resident. Must be a San Juan yeah. resident. Do you all have They could go anywhere? to school somewhere else, but right, they, right, they, right. they need to live in San Juan. Okay. Yeah. And all that information, sorry, is in jnava.com. So that's where we jnava. have our com? official agreement. Okay. That way I can let them know. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you so Thank you. much. Next item is presentation of the proclamation recognizing October 23rd to the 31st, 2017 as National Red Ribbon Week in San Juan, Texas. Uh, do we have any representative? Good evening, my name is Melissa and I work for Behavioral Health Solutions of South Texas and work in conjunction with the PSJ district and the Tri-City when it comes uh, coordinating this event. Um, this year we are gonna have it here in the city of San Juan, so we thank you very much, we also invite you. Uh, this event, we've been having it, the Red Ribbon Parade, for many years now, and we would continue to do it uh, and raise awareness on the dangers and consequences of uh, substance abuse here in our area. And we would like to invite you guys. I know that we left a proclamation for you, for Mayor, to sign, and uh, we will be, of course, uh, taking it next week to the city of uh, Far as well. Okay? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Next item, Mayor Commissioners, is the uh, presentation on departmental reports. Uh, we have the Department of uh, Planning and Zoning, Parks and Recreation, San Juan Memorial Library, and the Sanitation Department. Uh, if there's any questions that you may have, uh, they're here ready available. I'm going to ask you, uh, Mr. Arona, on the street side, uh, we got some calls. Andrew, uh, when, when is that going to be done? Uh, th that one is scheduled to be, hopefully, if everything goes well, is by Friday. It should be paved. And that, that's what uh, the contractor told us today. It, it, they, they should be there by Friday. And some people have asked me on, uh, this is, is uh, Capulco or the ones that we didn't do drains there? Which one, the three streets that we did up there? Capulco and uh, what were they, Javi? What's in it? Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. That's on, off of Sioux Road, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sioux Road. Th those, the streets have a little ele elevation for the, for the drainage, right? But we don't, the project did not include the drainage. No, Puerto Vallarta did not involve drainage improvements, but uh, if you remember, about a month ago, we had a real good rain. Uh, so I went out there, and, and the subdivision handled the rain very well. Well, well. Yeah. And I'm just asking, because some of us have made some comments on that, and we, we're aware that we, we didn't do uh, drain improvement, but we figured that the streets would be a little elevated and have more, more run f water flow. And there were a lot of sections in that section where the curve will go down, where the water will pond. So we, we made adjustments to the curves in different sections of the subdivision. Uh, so because those adjustments were made, uh, there was no considerable funding on the side of it. It was very little uniformly across the subdivision. What about the collection that's up here next to Las Flores that we were doing the Valencia. Pool? Valencia. Valencia. That was already Valen complete. Valencia Village was completed a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And we didn't see any, any uh, stagnant water or anything like that uh, after the rain that we had. So it uh, it looked it looked good, and it's uh, I think it it, it pretty much uh, it, it was a very good project on that Valencia subdivision. And next week is uh, Capri subdivision. God willing, that's where they're going to start. Uh, next, God willing, next week it will be uh, Hooper, Pullen, Salazar, Coconut Palm. Uh, those streets will be paved. I mean, they're already working there, and you know. Yes. yes. They and got the caliche. Right. Yes. Yeah, right now they're doing concrete work. And uh, the concrete work is uh, should be completed this week, and then next week it should be the paving. 
Now that, that's the uh, that's the Urban County project. Pues, it's the same. That's a county project. Yes. Pues the same contract. It's the same contract, right? And when uh, 12th Street will be when will we be doing 12th Street and all that? 12th Street. 12th Street. 12th Street is the one here close by. I know that it's on the on the list. In the list, I, I know just don't know when when that one is oh, going to be worked out. That's phase, I think that's phase two. That's phase two. I, yes. yes, that's phase two. Okay. Mas Flores, uh, Mr. Cervantes. Yes. I know the last time we questioned about that, it was complete. But yes. here it still shows that on your Yeah, there's a still a few items that need to be uh, done. A, a punch list was a punch list was com done by the engineers of different things that needed to be uh, done by the contractor to complete the project. Uh, also, part of the paving wasn't done correctly, so they need to do uh, at the intersection of uh, State and 18th Street. They need to do an overlay because there was a water pounding at, at the intersection. So there's still, there's still things that they need to do to complete the project. And uh, there's a, a large check that they will not get until they complete the punch list. But the drainage is complete. The drainage portion is complete. Did you ever look into the, the four-way stop at, uh, what is it, Nebraska and Ridge Road? What yes. Was, what was the status on that, sir? Well, on that one is it's uh, one of those that uh, we'll be looking at uh, on the next uh, the next phase, which more than likely uh, we're going to go out for bids. Hopefully, if everything goes well by December, November, the later November, part of this November. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not only to repay, but also to work on the drainage improvements, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I mean it, it really wouldn't help if we just repave it, uh, because eventually it's going to be all you know deteriorated with the rain and stuff like that. So we're going to improve it with some draining uh, drainage improvements in that area. These are two inlets that will be added right. at the intersection, and then the repaving, but all the way to 12th Street. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that's part of the phase two project. Okay. But that intersection is going to be cement, no, or paving? No, it's going to be uh, asphalt, but it's going to have additional inlets. So with additional inlets, the water should flow. Should flow. Yeah. yeah. So the asphalt should should last because the water will. Right now, the water just stays there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that is a really bad intersection. Yeah. Um, I can't wait for that project, but unfortunately like we have to. You and like <laughs> other people. Unfortunately, yeah. it's in phase two, in phase one. So we have to uh, wait, uh, God willing, in, in January, uh, maybe maybe in the Christmas break. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, my, my question would be for Mr. Willingham. Um, as far as community events, anything scheduled for September? For September? For September, no, sir. Nothing. We've got um, October coming up. Right. And so yeah, I noticed that. Uh, this uh, month's report will include the upcoming for, for next month. For ne right, for this next month, for October, but nothing for September. No. Why? Why didn't we have a September 9-11 event this year? Wasn't aware of one that had taken place. Uh, uh, I wasn't aware either. No, nothing was brought to my attention as far as anything as far as 9-11. Right. Um, I know I did mention. Hopefully we can have one monthly, so check with staff in case you're not familiar with whatever took place last year. Maybe they can bring you up to date. There, there was one last year that took uh, place? 9-11? Yes. There was one? Okay. okay. I'll check with them. On, uh, though we do have, we do have uh, Right, I see here the cancer awareness. Yes. Walk and the Red Ribbon Parade. Red Ribbon yes. Parade, how are we involved in that? We're, we're hosting it uh, in two will show the route okay. uh, that will start in front of City Hall and end at the high school. Uh, so that parade will take place here in the city of San Juan. Cancer awareness? The cancer How's awareness walk uh, also uh, will have that route uh, once it gets approved by uh, TxDOT, the, uh, the 83 have part. Have you been approved yet? Uh, no, we submitted the paperwork, but it should be, it should be approved already uh, here pretty quick. We also had to coordinate with the city of FAR on the veterans. Uh, which they've already approved as well. So uh, we'll have that route up uh, here in the next meeting or two. But uh, that will take place on the Saturday, October 28th, yes. And, they, and That'll and start Mr. at Carmen Rodriguez Elementary. Is attending the meeting. I'm sorry? Mr. Rodriguez is attending Yes, he's already, uh, he attended the first one uh, in FAR, and then the second one we had here in, in the city of San Juan, and the rest of them will be here. Yeah, the, the Halloween festival? The Halloween festival is set for Tuesday, uh, the 31st. 
October 31st? October 31st, yes. And that would be in the next agenda? Yes. Minutes? Okay. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions? The next item on the public hearing and ordinances hold a public hearing to authorize city managers to submit the fiscal year 2017 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grand JAG program local solicitation. Uh, Chief. In the American Commissioners, just a uh, regular grant that we apply for every year, and uh, we're asking for it to be. Uh, Approved for fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty-nine to buy some unit radius for our vehicles. What's the amount, Chief? The amount is fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty-nine. Uh, the grant is uh, for fifteen thousand, but we're gonna the PD is gonna incur the seven hundred forty-one, so we can be able to purchase a unit radius. And you have that money available? Chief? Yes, we do. I'm going to go ahead and open this up at, uh, what time is it? 36 <coughs> for the public. Is there anyone here for or against on item A? Is there anyone here for or against? State your name for the record, sir. Rick Ramirez. Thank I've you. seen these radios, uh, the ones that are uh, the chief uh, brought up, the digital mobile. They're more encrypted. They're obviously a uh, bigger upgrade for the older models of the vehicles that VHS has. Of course, uh, this, uh, it's a great addition, of course, uh, I'd be for it. What I wanted to address is, will this uh, finally solve the problem of on the approval of the texting ordinance that your officers were able to use their phones due to the statute of the state of Texas? Will this uh, issue be resolved by having the more encrypted uh, system, having the officers not be able to use their phone, which was the excuse uh, last time to submit the texting and driving? Uh, that you mentioned that the officers need to use their phones on several occasions because it's not a secure line. Will this be more secure for, uh, and can we see more officers having less uh, of a distraction with their phones, whether it's texting or being on their phones for calls? Chief, for uh, response. <clears throat> talking about, but uh, these radios are for uh, radios that uh, vehicles that we're purchasing and uh, unit radios that are necessary for the department to function, you know, and uh, better provide a better service for our officers. It's all about safety for the officers to make sure that when they work on the south side, sometimes they also travel to other cities and stuff like that to do follow-ups, so it's just basically for that. Thank you. Follow-up. Uh, what I was mentioning to the officer, uh, was the chief, was that he mentioned when he brought up the proposition for, for passing the texting ban, he mentioned that his officers, uh, by the state law, they could use their exempt uh, from using their phones, not like people that they use their phone, they need to pull the side to the side. But uh, he mentioned that his officers, in several occasions, they can use their phone. Uh, they are excluded under the law. Uh, what I was mentioning is, can we see a decrease? Because he mentioned that that was the use for it several instances the line is not secured. That's why this system is more encrypted. So that means anybody who has a, a portable system at their house, if they have their license, they can scan and they can hear any conversations that the officers may have. So this one's obviously more secure. That can never happen. So what was I, I was asking is, will this system now added to the, to the police units, will that decrease the use of personal cell phones on the job or behind a wheel? which is, of course, the safety of the public that we don't want to see. That's why we have a texting back. Thank you. Anyone else for or against? If not, any questions from the members of the commission? I'm going to go ahead and close this at 6.40 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? A move. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is consider the first reading of an ordinance adopting the tax rate levy for the city of San Juan, Texas, for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2017, and ending September 30, 2018. On the last meeting, Mayor Commissioners, we uh, we read the public hearing. Now we're doing the ordinance. 
Uh, so we need to do a couple of hearings on that. Uh, as, as, as before, the tax rate stayed the same at 0.6993. Nothing has changed, so this is just uh, the first of the two readings. I'm going to go ahead and open this up to the public at 6.40 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Any questions, members of the commission? Uh, we're, we're just going to leave the tax rate the same way in the last year. So, you know, and I know that some people make comments that we should kind of lower it, but uh, the fact that we've been doing streets and other st other things, I think so. We need to leave it there. And people have asked us to increase our pay to our employees to ten dollars an hour, which we're trying to do. So, for those reasons, we will leave this, the the tax rate where it is. Any other comments? No? If not, I'm going to go ahead and close this at 6.41 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Thank you. The next item is for the public hearing and consider ordinance adopting the budget for the city of San Juan, Texas for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2017 to September 30th, 2017. Again, this is the uh, same as what we discussed in the last meeting on, on the budget that was presented. And we have not, we will not make any additional changes to it. Correction, 2018. No. I'm sorry. 2000. Yes, 2018. I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 6:42 p.m. Is there anyone from the public for or against? Is there anyone from the public for or against? State your name for the record, again, sir. You know, on the past meeting, uh, you guys discussed uh, the budget, of course. Uh, I'd be against it only because, as I mentioned previously, uh, the budget was only discussed once in a budget workshop, which happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I would like for there to be a second budget workshop, giving it at least have a minimum of two budget workshops to really hash out all the 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 adjustment that needs to be made to to a budget as it should. Uh, the reason that I would be, I would be against this, uh, like it was discussed in those budget workshops, is that reclassification. And I quote those because what uh, some of the commissioners did mention is the change of title. I know some of them did mention that. And it really is a promotion. So my question to you, if you could clarify it, is we do want, like Commissioner Garcia mentioned, we do want to bring our workers up to 10, because there's uh, several of them, a good bunch, I think it was 16 that were still under $10. So we do want to bring our, our workers up to 10. But if we're reclassifying as several departments want to do that, and it's actually a promotion, it should be treated as a promotion. Does the, the promotion come with a change of salary? And if it does, does that uh, change anything with the $10 that the city's trying to achieve? I'll be for the $10 because we really need to bring up those workers. But does that affect? the reclassification process that's going into effect. We could clarify that. Will it affect anything? If those departments do go ahead with the change of title, will that affect the, the process that we're trying to achieve with the $10? I think so we didn't change any. any we we're going to wait, wait for the study that we're getting. Right. For and, the study. And, and for the record, if I may, uh, there were a couple of workshops. And yeah. yes, there, there were some uh, reclassifications that were not taking place because of the fact that we're doing a, a comprehensive study. So we're waiting on those. Uh, and would those come back before the the, the fiscal year? That no, sir. Be? It'll be after. It'll be after. So only the 10 would be on this budget? Would that be adjusted for the workers? Uh, Ms. Cordero, call that. It's only those and uh, a couple of others. But those are reclassifications only because of the fact that they are truck drivers and they work, they're labeled as laborers. And uh, they're doing the work of a truck driver. That's the only reason why they were reclassified to that. And another question was the three percent you discussed on the last meeting, was that only for a specific department? That's three, across the board. The three percent was across the board. Okay. Thank and you very much. The, the, the were 16 employees were going to be raised at 10, and then three percent across the board that included them. So that would get them to the standard of living. Yeah, we really need to take care of those workers. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else for or against? Any questions? from the members of the commission. If not, I'm going to go ahead and close this at 6.45 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? No. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 
Motion carries. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner uh, Mayor, under appointments, we have considered appointment of board members to the City of San Juan Keeps, Keeps San Juan Beautiful Board. And I believe in front of you have the, uh, the list of the people that submitted their interest in participating in these boards. Um, This is the uh, Keep San Juan Beautiful Board, right? Yes. Okay. And what was handed to us was the Library Advisory Board. Right, because there's two items, Mayor. Got you. That'll okay. be on the second, the other item coming. Go ahead, Ms. Carlos. All right. Uh, at this time, is there any uh, nominations? There, there are three vacancies, correct, Ms. Good evening, Mayor. Sorry. Um, yes, there are currently three spots open for the Keep San Juan Beautiful Board. Um, before you, there are three possible candidates that um, submitted their application earlier today. <clears throat> and then for the library board, there is one position open. Okay. And also before you, you have three applications. Then you, if, you, if you all would consider them. I'm going to do the same time on beautiful there's, first. There's three spots open. Right, right, right. Uh, Mr. Palacios, there's, there's, a, there's an individual who, who submitted an application for both. Can I address that individual real quick? Or? Of course you can. Uh, Ms. Reyes, I know you submitted an application for, for both the Keep San Juan Beautiful Board and the Library Board. Uh, me personally, I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but I would like to have different people serve on different boards. Um, with that being said, do you have a preference to which you would rather serve? Library board? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So that would bring us back down to two. Let's start lining back here. So we're going to put two and two? Huh? We're going to put in well, two. Well, no, this one is three, but this one, yeah, this one is only two. That gives them at least four, two more, so they can have right, a quorum. Right, so they can have a quorum because they don't have. They, they don't have a quorum at this point. Do you want me to make a motion to appoint at this time, Mayor? Uh, to appoint Eric Guajardo and Jennifer Villarreal to the Keep San Juan Beautiful Board. So move. Okay, what was the name again, sir? The motion is to appoint uh, Eric, Eric Guajardo. Guajardo and Jennifer Villarreal to the Keep San Juan Beautiful Board. That's two only, right? Right. Yeah, there's only there was three, but yeah, one of them. I got you. We'll come next meeting with another one if oh, somebody yeah. comes. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Again. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The next item, as you know, is the uh, the considered appointment of the board members to the San Juan Public Library. And before you have a list, and the uh, the ones that uh, showed interest. ask you this, Mr. Arjona. This, these appointments, application for appointment sheets, were these in our package or no? No. Those just came in today, Mayor. Okay. We didn't have any yeah, uh, yeah, on Friday. Was, I, yeah. I think, uh, I guess for future, you know, I know they, they submit these applications uh, last minute too, right? Yes. That's why we're not kept up to uh, par on the, on, on the applicants, right? That is correct, sir. They were submitted today. Today? Yes. Mm. Okay, okay. No problem. We waited on, on Friday until the very last minute, and, and we just print out the packets the way they were. But uh, today we, we got the, uh, the ones for the San Juan Beautiful Board and also for the library. Okay. All right. First motion I would like to make is to appoint uh, Maria O. Reyes to replace Clio Rateria. Second. It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And then next, I would like to make a motion to remove Eduardo Lopez and appoint Lydia Perkins. Second. 
been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item is under discussion and possible election on all of the following matters. It's a discussion and possible election regarding upcoming special election to fill the vacancy of city commissioner place number four. And uh, Mr. Council, if you can. Um, we had this matter set um, as an agenda item so we can get a feel from this commission um, as to whether or not you wanted the county to handle the election, the city, so they could start inquiring, contracting, getting machines set aside to see whether or not they can conduct this election, uh, to offer guidance to this council. I know that the city secretary takes care of it, is posed with the responsibility to conduct this uh, and assist with this election. I know the secretary of state needs to be contacted and there's a lot of deadlines and, and notices that need to go out, pre-clearance letters and so forth or whatever. Uh, legal's on standby and willing to assist and help to make sure that we get this on. Um, I know there was a vacancy that was created by by way of an announcement to run for, to seek another office by Commissioner Maldonado. That uh, created a resign to run and therefore it, um, it creates a vacancy. Therefore we need, the only way it could be filled as per your, um, as per the code would be to fill it by way of an election. Uh, not by appointment and it tells us when we have to have that election it, it guides us and tells us that we have to have it within 100, 120 days but 100, 120 days from when from the, uh, the time the vacancy is created and the, the, the vacant the vacant if you if you tell him the the vacant becomes when he announced that day he announced and because we went to a four-year election that everybody serves for the four year that's why this this new law state law came into Correct. Well, it, it's uh, we can't fill it by way of uh, appointment. They have to be by because our terms are more than two years. The only way it could be filled is by way of a special election. That's the only way. And I think that's pretty much has been conceded. I think everybody understands the community, and I think the commission understands that the only way that this vacancy can be filled is by way of a special election. Um, it tells you that you need to try to do it within 120 days. There's also some conflicting rules because we have an upcoming general election date which is November 7th. It's a, a non-presidential year. Uh, there's also some rules that state under the constitution that states that if you don't meet the deadlines to have it on the, the election date, there's a rule that says you can't have it an election 30 days before that state mandated date or 30 days after. I understand, I mean, that's basically forcing the people to go to the polls more than once and possibly there's a runoff twice or three times or four times. So um, there is a law that says you can't, there's a window uh, 30 days before, 30 days after a, a man, state mandated election date that you can't have an election. So if you don't miss, if, if that window, if we don't make the window, then the soonest you can have it would be 30 days after the, the, November, election. the November election date, which would be if the, if the election date is November 7th, the soonest possible date December would 7. be December 7th. Well, or the closest Saturday. The after. Saturday. Oh, there's a 31, uh, there's 30 days in, in November, so the soonest date would be the 7th or, you know, the Saturday or the Tuesday, typically whenever, depending on when. When's it's on the uh, Saturday. So. And going into December 7th, will we still be within the 120 days? No, you're not within the 120 We're days. But because it, but it's almost kind of like we're, on the, on we're we're forced into we're forced out of that because of the because of the natural window that's created by the election code or the constitution saying you can't. I mean, we would love to have it, you know, the the week after. I mean, if we can meet the deadlines, we would love to have it in November. But the problem with that is that we would be in violation with with the election code and the constitution because you can't have an election or call an election. 30 days before, 30 days after a state mandated date. So the election would be like November, uh, December 9th? Would That's be the Saturday. soonest that yeah. you could call it, which, which we, at this time, if and we get direction from the council, we should be able to meet those requirement, those requirement notices uh, to the Secretary of State, get some pre-clearance letters and, and order this election. Uh, That's the then. soonest date. That's the soonest. What's the latest date? 
That would be your soonest and your latest date. Because you're in 120 uh, if days. If you push it, it, it because, because the law says you have to have it within 120 days, it pushes the council to try to have that election. Obviously, you still have to comply with other conflicting laws, and there's a window that it creates that you can't have election within that time frame. I would hate to uh, tell this council that uh, you would have you have 30 more days or 90 more days after December 7th. I don't think you do because the law says you have to try to have it within 120 days. Um, the Secretary of State's gonna obviously see what predicament we're in, the fact that we can't call it within that 60 day window. So I would hate to uh, advise this board to have it further or past November 9th, if we could try to have it on the 9th. And one, and one thing is regardless what day or how later you have it, if Commissioner Maldonado was to decide to stay in this seat, he would have to run in this election. Yeah, that, run that's correct. There's no, there's no. Uh, well, it creates a resign. The announcement created a resignation, a resi a vacancy by by way of announcement. Um, Announce yeah. announcement meaning when I filed for my treasury. Uh, announcement could be a, a public. quote unquote public announcement to a uh, written letter, a filing of a treasury. Uh, typically. Uh, if it's a, a concrete a concrete announcement, then basically that's that would be the date that the vacancy resigned to run commence, basically. It's actually it's a, a, an automatically resignation. That's correct. Once you announce. That's correct. It's a, uh, until no, but again, a resignation automatically is meaning me stepping down. No, no. no. It's a resign. It's a. It's called a, a resign <coughs> to run. A resign to run. So under the election code. Um, so I. I can serve here on my seat until your vacancy is until filled. we elect. until we elect. So, we so elect Commissioner Mandonao still has the voting power up to the day we elect somebody. That's correct. Yes, is that right? Okay. Well, okay. It would be your election. No, I just want to make that clear, though. There's yeah. still rules. You, you election canvass your vote, then obviously somebody is sworn in, and it basically kind of passed the torch from on that date, and that person that would be. You, you fill the position up to the date that the vacancy is filled. So not the election, but when the vacancy is filled, because you still have to canvass the votes or canvass the election. Typically it's done, you know, a week after after the election, and then canvass and then swear somebody in. But we don't, we don't have city meetings all, all December, no? It's been during <laughs> the holidays, and so. <laughs> because it's the election. We only have one meeting. <laughs> So, so, Mr. Palacios, the so my, my the question was, how <coughs> late can you have it? I, because we're we would be outside the 120 days, but within the window of the 60-day window that we can't have, and we would be able to justify the reason, a, a reason, a justifiable reason, a legal reason that we didn't meet the 120 days. I would advise this council to have it the, at the earliest opportunity possible, because you're outside the 120 days. But you lost 60 days just because of the uh, the election code. So December 9th. December 9th would be the, the safest. Date, the the safest. safest date. That's correct. It would be the safest date. Um, and the other guidance that needs to, that that at least the city manager and our city secretary needs to receive is: Do they start contract contacting the the county? the county elections department so that way they can start. Uh, making arrangements for con uh, contracting machines and and sites and this and that, or is it is this is an election that the city's going to handle, or whether or not it's going to have the county handle it? Um, I haven't been with um, with the the city long enough to know what the election history has been and and who who you guys use or whether or not you guys run the election or the county does. So um, we just need to make sure that our manager and and our city secretary has the guidance from this council what you want them to do or where you, how you want them to to proceed. We don't have numbers yet, do we? What will co what the cost would be if they would run it and if we run it? Well, they have more or less an idea. The, county um, the last time we ran the election at the city was more costly than the uh, county running the election. And due to the fact that we have a new city secretary and tech, you know, when voters go out there, sometimes they create a different questions and stuff. It's a lot easier for them to call the county, and the county address those issues. I That's guess my, my concern opinion. would be: is it within our, or do we? Can you account for that in our budget? I want to say that we set aside monies for for the uh, for the uh, county to take care of the election. 
Buen día. Yes. We'd feel more comfortable with the county running our election then. Yes. What's the next step? So, Rick? The, the next step would be, um, I, I probably would love to entertain a motion to, to yeah. have the, try to have the election on December on, 9th. On December 9th. With the and county. also uh, with the caveat that the, uh, the city manager and city secretary start inquiring with the county as to what it's going to take financially and to start working on those contracts. Okay. Uh, the contracts always can be worked on as we're sending our notices to the secretary of state and getting our preclearance letter or whatever. So that's that we have even more time to try to iron out. But it would be nice to, to see whether or not the county can assist us on that date. I don't think they're going to be dealing with any other election at that time. But I know that machines got to get serviced and they get calibrated and they, there's a lot of things that happen after an election and then they, they, they canvass their votes and so I know they have to wipe machines or, or kind of do what they have to do to prep them up for another election. So those are the kind of things that, that need to be discussed with our elections uh, department to see uh, if they can get machines ready ready for an election on on December 9th. If that's what the council wants to do, which would be a recommendation to try to get it the soonest possible date uh, after the 60 day window. That oh, so so let me ask you this. So, so the December 9th date, is that concrete as we speak right now or no? Well, no, it, it's that, a that's probably the, the first possible date, but I think the motion would be, uh, December 9th or, on or, the, about. Or, the, or the first possible date on December that it's allowed? Well, I think we're going to, obviously, we still have to come back before this council. We still have to create an ordinance calling the election. Exactly. But at least we're, we, we wanted to make it a discussion point for this council and obviously for the public. So that way we kind of have an idea where, to, where we're working towards. Um, but you're absolutely right. We, we still have to, by ordinance, call the election. So this thing's still going to come back to you, so that way you, we can approve an ordinance. And that's when we'll have the concrete date. But at least right now, if we can get some direction from this council, we can at least start having our, 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 our city manager, city secretary, legal assistant to start working towards that. And then if that's the case, then we come back here and report, start preparing an ordinance to call the election and tell you that we, we, can, we can do it. I think by then we should have numbers and financially what it's going to take and so forth but uh, we just got to get the the ball rolling the ball rolling so again there's no i mean again the law and, and uh, legalities not resigning seeking higher office any way possible that i can still serve while i run for a higher not, office you can still you're under the election code um you it's a resign to run you have you are able to to remain on your seat until the vacancy is filled that's what the law says so um whether you decide not to run anymore the only way that you would be able to remain on your seat after the special election would be having to run for the position what happens if nobody were to run for my position well then you uh, interpreting the law the way the election code reads you, you continue to serve until your vacancy is filled. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's what I that's what I read. It's not. So I uh, would I would try to convince people if, not to if, run. If, 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 <laughs> if, if he was to decide to run and nobody would apply, you would still hold an election and nobody would to challenge you. And then it, we call the election and you don't have no no opponent. So. Well, you no, no, no. He, he, he's not on the ballot anymore. So it would be still a vacancy. Yeah, that's why it's and a vacancy. So, uh, another another so 120 days and... Well, not necessarily because... If, um, for his own chair. Well, it depends because you can't hold more than two offices. If uh, if your election, if you continue with the, the election that you're, uh, that you're seeking, county election, then that also... Now we got to look at what the rules are as, as far as serving in two positions or whatnot. But I, I wouldn't imagine that that's even, that's a 20, you don't serve, the no, position that's seeking doesn't serve until year 2019, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Okay. But no, if 
to answer your question, if uh, somebody doesn't run or there is, you know, it's open still, you're still manning your office until the vacancy is filled. That's what the rule said. That's what the rule in the election code states. And I can get some, I can get you uh, the statute and give you the, the, the rule there so that way you can take a look at it. But yeah. I read it as you serve until the vacancy is filled, uh, but you're considered resigned. You're, it's a vacancy, and so you serve until that position is filled. And whoever we elect will just be finishing off the rest of my term. That's good. That's yes. That's another good question. That's correct. Uh, our, our, our charter already, um, it's a four-year term, and it has interchangeable every other year. There's two offices and I think three offices that are up and so forth. So whoever runs for this special election would be winning the unexpired term. So whatever remaining that whatever you have remaining in whatever's remaining in, in that place that was that's become available or that's become vacant, that the special election would be called and that person would be elected to that unexpired term and then would have to run again when that half. place when that place comes up again, would have to run again. That's correct. So a year and a half after. Yeah. Which is in, in which is the twenty nineteen. That, that's correct. So uh, that candidate would not be win, winning, would not be getting a four-year term. It would be to have. serve out the re, the unexpired term. That's correct. We did list it again uh, as an as an action item. It could be uh, just a, it could be a motion to, that to recommend to try to look for, to try to seek to have the election on a such and such date and to work with the county. Again, we still are gonna come back to this commission to report what we researched and also to order the election by way of an ordinance. So um, at least some sort of recommendation and consensus from this board to have the city manager and city secretary start you know, inquiring and start looking into to this special election. You want a motion? Or? A, a motion. A motion to to, to recommend the uh, to recommend to to start working on an election as on. soon as possible, uh, and to start working with the county and the city, the city manager and the secretary to start making arrangements for the election. Well, what else do you want to add, add to it? And seeking for the December the first the December ninth date. December ninth date. That's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item, Mayor Commissioners, is the uh, consider awarding the bid number 17-55-08-31 for the purchase of chlorine to the DPC Industries Incorporated from Corpus Christi, Texas in the amount of $784 per tonnage. Mr. Salinas. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, at the commission of June 2, 13, 2017, commission authorized staff to accept Advertise and accept sealed bids for water and wastewater treatment chemicals, analytical laboratory services, and solids handling services. On August 31st, 2017, we did receive two sealed bids for the purchase of chlorine, one from Brent Tag South of Southwest. Uh, they, they submitted a no bid for that, and the other one was DBC Industries out of Corpus Christi in the amount of $784 per ton and $135 for 150-pound cylinders. At this time, we are recommending that we award the bid to DPC Industries out of Corpus Christi. To add to that note, they are a current supplier. I'll move. Is there any questions oh. for Mr. Salinas at this time? If not, is there a motion to approve? I mean, this is a standard, regular standard deal, so, so move. Second. Second. It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, consider awarding bid number 17-56-08-31 for the purchase of sulfur dioxide to DPC Industries Incorporated from Corpus Christi, Texas, in the amount of $749 per ton. Ms. Salinas. Mayor Commissioners, again, as before, we did a uh, conversation from this commission, this board, and we did get it back in June 2017 to advertise for these chemicals. And on August 31st, we did receive two sealed bids, one again from Brentag Southwest and another one from DPC uh, Industries out of Corpus, 
This time we are uh, re requesting authorization to award the bid to DPC Industries, that is Corpus Christi, in the amount of $749 per ton. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Next item, consider awarding the bid number 17-62-08-31 for the purchase of liquid ammonium sulfate to Chemtrade Chemicals U.S. LLC from Odom, Texas, in the amount of 0 0.097 per pound. Mr. Salinas. Again, as before, we did some authorization from the commission back in June uh, 2017. On August 31st, we did receive two sale bids for the purchase of liquid ammonium sulfate, one from Brent Tag Southwest and the other one in the amount of uh, 20, 2, 0.2075 per pound in DPC industry. That is a typo. The other one should be a chemtrade for the amount of 0 0.097 pounds. So we are recommending that we award it to chemtrade in the amount of 0 0.097 per, ton, per pound. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, consider awarding bid 17-59-08-31 for the purchase of sludge hauling and disposal services to Denali <coughs> Water Solutions from Russellville, Arkansas, in an amount not to exceed $475 per load. Mr. Salinas. Commissioners, again, uh, we did re receive bids for this one on the 31st. We only received one bid for this one from Denali out of uh, Russellville, Arkansas. And we are recommending that we award the bid at uh, $475 per load. They are a current supplier. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Garcia, second by Commissioner Maldonado. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item. Next item is consider awarding bid 17 60 08 31 for the purchase of 230 yard dewatering containers to Water Tech Incorporated from Waller in the amount of 32,980 each for a total of 65,960. Mr. Salinas. Again, Commissioners, uh, receive uh, bids on August 31st. Uh, uh, we did receive one sale bid from Water Tech Industries out of Waller, Texas. Uh, a few days later, we did receive a letter that's in your package from a second vendor who was requesting we, uh, I guess, re-advertise or consider awarding them a bid because they weren't able to submit the bid due to hurricane uh, that hit the area at the time. Um, my recommendation is that we award it to WaterTech as the price is already out there for this other customer, this other vendor to know, and I don't think it'd be fair to WaterTech Industries. Any questions? So move. Is there a motion? Very good. Motion by Commissioner Garcia, second by Commissioner Guajardo. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item. Next item, consider awarding the bid number 17610831 for the purchase of aluminum sulfate blends to Chemtrade Chemicals US LLC from Autumn, Texas in an amount of 0 .0604 per pound. Mr. Salinas. Again, on August 31st, 2017, we did receive two seal bids. Uh, for the purchase of aluminum sulfate and blends from Brentag, one from Brentag Southwest Inc. from Houston, Texas uh, for 0732 and Chemtrade Chemicals out of uh, Odom, Texas for 0604. Uh, at this time, we had recommended to go with the lowest bidder, but after discussing this with staff, there's been some service issues with Chemtrade, so we are recommending that we continue with our current vendor, Brentag uh, Southwest. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, consider awarding bid number 17570831 for the purchase of sodium chloride solution to Volcoa Water Technologies LLC from Sarasota, Florida, and the purchase of chlorine dioxide generators to JCS Industries Incorporated from Spring, Texas. Mr. Salinas. Technology. Um, we did, we did award, uh, again, we, we asked for authorization to solicit bids. We did advertise. Uh, we did extend this bid to open later uh, due to some issues with some addendums. At this time, we are recommending that we uh, approve the bid for the purchase of the sodium chloride solution to Evoqua Water Technologies from Sarasota, Florida for the amount of 0.527 cents per pound and the purchase of four chlorine oxide generators to JCS Industries from Spring, Texas in the amount of $14,956 each. 
Uh, to add to that, uh, the calculations show that this would be a 50% savings on cost of the chemical, this chemical purchase in the next fiscal year. Is there a motion to so move? Is there a All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. <clears throat> The next item, consider approval of the renaming of San Juan Memorial Park, located A19, Sergeant Leonel Trevino, to Sergeant to San Juan Fireman Park. Uh, Chief. Mayor. I guess uh, from the last meeting in August, the, the approval was to the fire department acquire that, that park. We're just going through the proper uh, protocol to change the name from uh, Memorial Park, San Juan Memorial Park, to San Juan Fireman Park. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second? second? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. We have already covered J section, I mean item J and K, so we'll go to section six, contractual and resolutions. Preliminary and final plan approval of the San Juan and Eldoro subdivision being a 1.78 acre tract of land being a portion of lot 14 block A, John Klausner subdivision, located at the northeast corner of Olongoria and Eldora roads as requested by Ari Garcia and Associates. <coughs> Mr. Cervantes. Yes, I'm Mr. Trevino. The Assis Quick Stop LLC is proposing to subdivide 1.78 acres into a, a lot, commercial lot in order to build the Assis convenience store with a gas station. Part of the property was on commercial, if you remember a few months ago, and then the conditional use permit for the uh, uh, selling of gas and for the sale of alcoholic beverage for off-premise consumption was appro approved by you uh, during the May 23, 2017 meeting. Uh, Mr. Trevino is proposing to have an entrance along Raul Longoria Road and two entrances along Eldora Road. He will need to provide 14 feet of additional pavement along Eldora Road and will need to relocate the traffic signal box located at the northeast corner of the intersection of or escrow funds with the city <coughs> prior to subdivision recording. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended uh, the uh, approval of the plat during their August 17 meeting subject to the list of conditions pro provided in your packet. What was the vote, Mr. Sanders? Unanimous. So any issues in regards to this? Everything's up to par? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not requesting any variances. So now the engineering is being uh, done as we speak. And uh, God willing, in two or three months, they're going to break ground in the, for the store. We're working with them as, as much as we can. <coughs> and I know that's a part of town that could use a convenience store. Any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Next item, preliminary and final plan approval of the Garden Ridge Subdivision Phase 2, being a 10.22 acre track of land out of uh, the lot 100 acres of Los Toritos Grant, located approximately a quarter of a mile east of Stewart Road along the south side of Sam Houston Avenue as requested by Quintanilla, Headley and Associates Incorporated. Mr. Cervantes. Yes, running Cantu Construction proposing to subdivide 10.22 acres uh, property along the south side of Sam Houston Avenue, approximately a quarter of a mile east of Stewart Road in order to build a subdivision with 38 residential lots. He is proposing a private gated subdivision with an entrance along Sam Houston Avenue. The phase one subdivision was developed in 2016 and is located immediately to the south of this proposed subdivision. Once completed, the two subdivisions will be connected and residents will be able to enter and exit at the subdivisions both from Sam Houston Avenue and Ridge Road. Uh, the subdivision is outside the city right now, so a letter of requesting annexation will have to be submitted by the developer before the subdivision gets recorded. No variances are being requested. Planning and Commission recommended approval for August 17 meeting, subject to the list of requirements. So it's not in city limits? No, we will have to... Uh, annex it? Annex it, yes. Phase one was completed last year and you have, there's nice houses going up. It's a nice addition to the city, so I, I expect uh, the same for this. And it's also a private subdivision, so we don't have to maintain the street. This is the one that's going to connect from, from the one on the Ridge Road? It's going to yes. To Once completed, apartment. it's going to connect to the it's phase one. To the You'll region. be able to enter from San Houston from both or from Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. There's going to be two entrances, two exits. Okay. Uh, Any questions? Are there questions? 
If not, is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item is preliminary and final plan approval of the Texas National Subdivision being a subdivision of 8.701 acres being 7.447 acres out of lot 13, block 5, and 1.254 acres out of lot 13, block 17, John Clauser subdivision located at the northeast corner expressway 83 or IH2 and Veterans Boulevard is requested by Melton and Hunt Incorporated. Mr. Cervantes. Yes, the developer is proposing to subdivide eight acres into four commercial lots. Texas National Bank is going to build a branch location in one of the proposed lots and the rest of the property is going to be de developed commercially in accordance with the new expressway corridor district regulations. Uh, three proposed entrances are, are proposed along the, along the expressway with one entrance along Veterans Boulevard. Texas has tentatively approved the three entrances proposed from the, from the frontage road. The property does not have sanitary sewer available and the developer will need to extend a sanitary sewer line along the north side of the property all the way to Veterans Boulevard. The sewer line will connect to the new lift station that will be constructed soon as a result of the uh, grant that the Juan EDC uh, received from the Texas Economic Development Agency. Uh, this went before Planning and Zoning Commission August 17, and it was approved unanimously. So what actually the bank is doing is putting their own line for sewers. Yes. And they're gonna cover the, the expense. Yes. They're gonna, from the, from the lift station that will be constructed, they're Behind gonna extend the, the line the, West. And the Lexus all the way to the Veterans Road. Yeah. yeah. Where are we at on that EDC uh, grant? I know. As a matter of fact, they had a meeting, uh, was it yesterday? Have, no, today. And uh, they're, they're scheduled to complete the, uh, which is the, uh, the street, the water, the uh, lift station, hopefully by November? Yeah. Something like that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The project uh, starts on Monday. And it should be in 90 days that will, yeah. will be complete. Weather permitting, uh, everything goes well. Uh, there shouldn't be any issues. There's a construction timeline that, that was provided to Lexus. Now, on this subdivision, uh, one of the uh, projects that is proposed is uh, one of those uh, Blue, Bay, Blue Wave car wash uh, the, uh, businesses. But our new uh, district that was uh, approved a few months ago does not allow uh, car wash facilities. So we're uh, in the process of amending the ordinance to allow uh, car wash. So that's gonna, the amendment of the zoning ordinance is it's gonna, gonna, on the next, next agenda? In the next, in the next, the meeting, next meeting, it's gonna come before you for approval to, uh, to amend the ordinance to allow car wash facilities along the new expressway corridor district. Any questions? Any more questions? Now, motion approved. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Thank sir. The next item is the city of the city manager Santa Contra with Pettis Consulting Engineers LLC for the East San Juan Water Improvements Project. Mr. Salinas. Here, Commissioners, uh, the proposed project is for engineering and construction of a 16 inch and 12 inch water line under Interstate 2, also known as West Expressway 83 at the intersection of Cesar Chavez along the North Frontage Road to what would be the Retama Street uh, right of way. The project is being funded through surplus monies out of the series 2014 bonds. Uh, engineering fees are estimated at $42,858 or 9% of the fin final construction cost. At this time, we are recommending the authorization to, for the city manager to sign the contract. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next item is considered authorizing city manager to sign a contract with Cruz Hogan Consultants for the Sorensen City School Park Project. Um, Mr. Salinas. Sorensen? I'm sorry, Cervantes. They're all the same. The city, of <laughs> <laughs> the city of San Juan was awarded, uh, if you remember, 160,000 grant from Texas Parks and Wildlife that needs to be with 160,000 in city funds towards the development of this uh, city school park that will be located at the southeast corner of Stewart and Sam Houston Roads. Uh, if you remember back in 2016, civil engineering students from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley assisted the city with conceptual ideas for the park. S the students gave a presentation to the city commission on September 27, 2016. 
uh, there's a packet in your uh, report in your packet with their report. That includes uh, that report includes features such as a butterfly garden, community garden, play playground and recycled tire playground, exercise stations, basketball court, gazebo, drinking fountain, barbecue, barbecue pits, uh, benches, and a walking trail, and sidewalks. The project is a partnership with the Far San Juan Alamo School District, uh, since the land where the park will be built is in, is in their property. Uh, this is intended to be a city school park, which will be usable by the school kids during school time, and then by the public in the evenings and weekends. Uh, if the contract is approved today, uh, next will be to work on an inter inter local agreement with the school district. So uh, we will not sign the engineering contract until we have an inter local agreement uh, with the school district first. We don't want to get the engineer started and then we don't have an agreement with the. How long is the agreement that you're going to do with the school district? Um, is Mr. Williams here? Uh, I'm More likely it's going to be a 10-year contract. Yeah, it's, it's, it has know. to be long-term. Well, no, normally yeah. they do a 10-year contract yeah. and then it's re revised. Yeah. And uh, this was some of the speculation is that if we put so much money in case the school district, and this is just for information, in case the school district needs this property, then they will get some of that money back. And normally most of the contracts are done in 10 years, and every 10 years we re revise them. A lot of times they don't need their property, but it's just a speculation that we put in there. So kind yeah, of so that's, look at that. If, if this is approved today, uh, this week we'll, we'll start with that interlocal agreement, and we'll bring it before you hopefully in your next meeting for your consideration. And this is one, one, only one of the projects that they're working, right, Mayor? There are several projects on parks that we're going to continue working with. That's correct, uh, Commissioner. We got a, a lot of real neat projects coming up with the uh, PSA school district. I know Commissioner Garcia has been in those meetings as well as I, and and it's something that you know our youth are 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 going to benefit from this as well. So uh, this this I know this project was in the works. Um, it's a, a yeah. part of it is a grant from Texas that's, Parks and Wildlife. Great. And we do have Mr. Willingham's also addressing those those meetings and you know putting his input on what the city can use. So correct, uh, and Mr. Guajardo in the back too, our assistant director as well. So you guys keep up the good work, and thank you so much for being involved. Um, I have one question for actually two. As far as the maintenance on the park, is the city going to be responsible for that, or 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 do we still need to discuss that I think that's during, gonna have, during the interlocal? It's going to have to be part of the interlocal. And then agreement. The, the opening and closing of the times as well, also, right? Also, okay. Also, okay. the inner local. That needs to be clear before we get going on. You know, who's responsible for what and well, yeah. not us. Who? What? I, I, mean, I don't know. I'm Typically, when it's other jurisdictions, uh, <clears throat> if it's the property of the school district, then usually, typically, they'll 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 have typically their staff there. Do some of the maintenance. They'll, that would be part of the inner local. Um, as far as the open and accessibility to the public, that's certainly um, like something that we need to incorporate in the MOU, yeah. so that way we can uh, we can justify to the citizens the investment <coughs> that's being made by the by the commission to make sure that there's a appropriate hours for the for the public to to use, and so no, uh, normally, we incorporate those hours. Yeah, and normally in the closing they'll talk, talk to PD at, at 11 o'clock. If they swing by just to lock them up, you know, and that's some some similar to what McAllen does. That at 11 o'clock, the PD goes and locks all the parks, and that's it. And sometimes, if there's not lighting available, then obviously that the hours are even yeah. are even uh, sooner than that. So, so okay. <laughs> but he doesn't want to hear that, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we don't have a curfew in in the city park, so that's something that we may want to yeah. work on. <laughs> okay, uh, so with matching the matching portion of it, the 160,000? Yes, sir. It's uh, set aside okay. for the uh, some of the seals that we got before yeah. on the, the last, uh, the, this fiscal year that hasn't ended. It's already set aside for that particular purpose. Any other questions, gentlemen? If not, is there a I'll motion move. to approve? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Next item, Mayor Commissioners, it's an item, consider authorizing city manager to enter into a license agreement for wireless installation on public structures between new singular wireless PCS 
LLC, DBA, and AT&T Mobility in the city of San Juan. Uh, fortunately, Mr. J.D. Salinas, former county judge, couldn't make it. Uh, but there's a uh, there's a presentation there on your packet, and what this is is a, a small what they call the small cells, and what this is 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 mainly uh, there's a new generation of uh, phone devices, I guess per se, that uh, right now we're currently receiving the light 4G, and uh, with this small cell that they're going to be placed strategically within the city, it'll in, it will improve the speed to 5G, and I forget what the speed is as far as megabits go. But uh, they're, they're looking into installing 12 uh, small cells throughout the city, and that will bring additional revenue to the city of San Juan. I want to say that it's something that we're still negotiating, but it's in the, f in the part figure of $12,000 a year. Additional cells that, that uh, are going to be up in here within the city, and those are services that uh, will be provided to any AT&T uh, uh, user. There's no maintenance on the city side. Everything will be their, 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 their maintenance. So I'll move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. The next item is consider the ratification of the extension of the invitation to submit proposals for fully funded health, dental, life, accidental death in these member benefits. Mr. Jaime. Mayor and Commissioners, good evening. Good evening, sir. On July 23rd, 2017, staff advertised for an invitation to submit proposals number 17540809 for fully funded health, dental, life, accidental death, and dismemberment benefits in the McAllen Monitor, and again on July 26, 2017 in the Advanced News Journal. Staff provided an 18-day deadline ending on August 9, 2017. In response, staff received one proposal for fully funded health, dental, life, and accidental death and dismemberment benefits, and one proposal for dental only, and another proposal for insurance for cancer, critical illness, accident, and uh, universal life only. Staff has recommended that the request to submit proposals number 17540809 be re-advertised and extended until September 22, 2017. And it was extended, Mr. Rene, because uh, the carrier would not provide the information needed for the insurance to make bids, right? That's not my understanding. Well, uh, did you submit, did you give insurance the numbers yourself? No, sir. The, our insurance carrier provides that. But the, he wouldn't provide it at one point? No, uh, no insurance provider communicated that information to me. What, what was communicated was uh, there was additional information asked for and it was provided on our website. But as far as not getting a response from our current carrier, that's not my understanding. I, nobody communicated that to me. If I just may, uh, Mayor, there were a couple of uh, carriers or, or, or uh, I guess vendors that were, tr that were getting a hard time getting some information back. Uh, as far as pro communicated with Mr. Jaime, I will relay though, that to Mr. Jaime because at that point I, I cannot dialogue with any of the vendors. However, there were some that were having issues with TMO directly, and they communicated that with me. And uh, I know that uh, our attorney and I spoke about that as well, that uh, there were some that were calling and saying, hey, we can't get this information out. Whatever the information was, I, I'm not really sure on that. I want to say it was some sort of a census data that they were not releasing at that point. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we decided to extend the the, uh, the date for another additional 10 days. Uh, and and also, also because of the fact that there was only one vendor bidding on that, uh, on that packet. And, and we were saying, well, I don't think it was fair that some people got a fair chance in getting some of the results back where they're versus some others that didn't get it back. So uh, we're, we, we uh, went ahead and, and extended, ratifying it now so that uh, you can approve this, that, that we ratify, I mean, to ratify it because we did extend it for additional time, so to speak, let's say. You're saying it was extended because they weren't getting the information? Yes, sir. But Mr. Hyman wasn't informed and, about that. Right, and, and those were the calls that I was getting from vendors. Uh, but they were not contacting Mr. Hyman? That I'm not sure, sir. 
I will send them over to the purchasing agent as he's the, the one, the only one that could talk to them. Right, right. But I can't. Mm -hmm. And I will give them their, their phone number, his phone number. Uh, that they were calling him or not, uh, I'm not aware of that. So, so Mr. Hyman, do you, do you have any information as far as with TML, what they have to offer our employees? Like as far as, I, I understand what you're saying, because in other words, what, what type of insurances, what covers, what offers, you know, for, for the employees here, for the city? We're going out for proposals and uh, insurance providers will, will uh, make their proposal. It may be similar to what we have now or it may be different. You know, and, um, they could uh, beat the price of our current carrier by offering a higher deductible, uh, more out of pocket. Okay, now right. that information that you're telling me, is there any way you can get that to us? So that way we can maybe compare it? Yes, sir. Once we, once we receive the bids, we're gonna provide a presentation so, you know, so you can see what the difference is between the different carriers. I, th I think the information that, that, that at least I understood from, from our city manager, and I'm not sure if you're the custodian of that, a lot of times they're looking for the sense of data, they're looking for the claim history, they're looking for um, quite a few things in order for them to, to be able to make a, a better proposal if they had that information. And I'm not, I'm not saying that the city is a custodian of that information, but um, I know that in other, other jurisdictions, we basically will instruct our carrier to uh, give you know limited amount of information, and everybody almost knows who's in the business of providing insurance. They already know what kind of inf information they need in order for them to put forth their best foot on making a, a making a bid. So I, I'm not saying. I don't know if you're the custodian of that information. It's possible. I don't. I don't think you are. I think TML has all that stuff. Sometimes they send you re annual or yearly reports telling you, "Look, this is this has been your claim history. This is how many people that are on your health plan, on your dental plan, on your vision plan. Uh, it's you know, these are how many how many numbers of claims that are being made. I know that general information like that could be provided to the insurance companies. Obviously, you can't be providing names and, and illnesses, all that other stuff, but if that information doesn't get to the carriers, a lot of times they don't have enough in order to quote, I guess, to quote on this bid. So the question becomes is, do you, has that information been provided or has TMO been instructed to provide that limited information in order for them to? TML has stated that they will provide it when it's requested. Okay. In our specifications, we require that the insurance providers provide a letter of assurance. And basically that letter of assurance states that they will protect the information that TML provides them. They'll be given specific uh, census information so they can make a, um, based on st statistics, provide a, a price of what uh, insurance they'll provide us. Um, obviously if you have older employees, they probably have will make more claims than the younger employees. So insurance for older employees, just like our life insurance, is higher. Um, so they would look at the ages of all our employees to make that determination on how much they would have to charge us. That information is provided by TML. It doesn't go through us because it's confidential uh, claims information. What type of uh, medical uh, uh, normally, normally, services you know, employees have had? Normally you got, you got your claims and you don't have names to the claims. Even TML. Yes, sir. TML should furnish the city how many employees are, are insured and what are their, their you know, what the, whatever, I sort of forgot the word. Um, the, okay. and, and it doesn't provide names. So that information is not like it has social security, so it has none of that data. The only data is how many claims you have and how many employees are, are being on, on, the, on the list. It's like when you go get an auto insurance, they ask you, how many tickets do you have? They don't tell you where you go. Have you, have you wrecked? How many kids are under age if they're driving? Because that determines what kind of value they're gonna put in that insurance. And T-Mail will hesitate or hesitate it to give that information because the longer he waited, it was harder for other agents to make a 
a proposal. It takes more than a week or two weeks to make a proposal and, and research all that data. And it's only data, it's no names, it's just numbers and claims. And that, that's, that's where, you know, we have seen those claims when I was in PSJA for eight years. I, you know, and that simple data that TML could pass the city and the city can give to whoever. If you're, if you're putting a bid, you gotta let me know how many employees are they and how many claims you have. If not, I'm lost. I don't know what to, to quote you. Sure. You know, and that's what, I feel that they already got that information. And probably the only one that sent us a, a bid was TML. Yes, sir. You see, because he had the data, he could make, a, 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 make that bid. The rest of them could not make a bid. And that's what we want. We want other bids so people, we can get the best comp competitive insurance for our employees. I believe, I believe the carriers should have the data to make a, a proposal. I agree. So. And, but it wasn't communicated to no, me. No, no, and, and I understand, and I'm not blaming you, Mr. Ray. I'm just saying that TML should furnish that insurance, that, that, you know, and you know, we're kind of stretching it because, you know, by October we got to get everybody insured. So the 22nd we need to address the insurance and look at all the information that comes in. And, you know, but I do, I do blame TML for what delaying I've, that information. What I've done again is we advertised it again twice. We're asking for ratification for this. We advertised it twice. I sent out emails to everybody that showed interest, that indicated that they wanted updates. And uh, this today I faxed them again, telling them, hey, it's out there. If you want to, you know, bid, you need to follow the, spe the specs, provide us a letter of assurance so we can get with TML. I'll communicate with TML that there are concerns that they didn't respond. Yeah. Uh, definitely, they need to respond. Yeah. So this item is no, yeah, yeah. It's it's to ratify, to ratify the extension. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is uh, consider authorizing the Chief of Police to apply and submit a grant application to the Governor's Office Criminal Justice Division. Uh, Chief. Mr. Mayor, Commission, uh, this is a grant that opened this year based on what happened in Dallas last year. Uh, for 2018, there was a $25 million uh, grant that was uh, that was uh, put out for anybody that was interested in applying for um, rifle resistant ballistic armor plates. And uh, we submitted an application for 50 of them, total of 35968 We're asking for, it, uh, for the grant to be approved so we can move forward. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> reading for the conditional use permit for the conditional use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption at the proposed hangout bar located at 302 US Business 83. Legally described as the West 165 feet of lot number two and West 60, 165 feet of lot number three. Block K number 23, letter block subdivision is requested by Arturo Medrano. So <clears throat> is, there, is there a motion to approve? This is the one and that's up in general? Little subdivision, I mean, a little of the, um, used to be Guajardo's. Okay. Businesses. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item is consider an ordinance in the second reading for the conditional use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off premise consumption at Valley Food Mart number two, located 102 South Nebraska Avenue, legally described as lots seven and eight. And, and eight. Block 4, San Juan Original Townsite Subdivision is requested by AA Family Incorporated. The one next to IDEA School. Yes. Yeah. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And the next item is approval of minutes. We have July 25th, 2017, August the 8th, 2017, and August the 22nd, 2017. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. The next item is executive session. Uh, we don't have to do number one. Uh, the city commission will convene executive session in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Vernon's Texas Statutes and Codes Annotated, Government Code Chapter 551. Uh, item number two, consultation with attorney and possible action regarding settlement concerning cost number CL 2616-E, Irene Soto versus City of San Juan in the County Court of Law number five, Hidalgo County, Texas 551.071, consultation with attorney. 
And the next item is uh, pursuant to Section 551074, personal matters to deliberate the appointment, employment, evaluation, resignation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee city manager. At this time, I'd like to put on the record that on the executive session A1, there would be no action, okay? And no discussion as well. A and 1? A1, yeah. The first one, no action. And no discussion as well. Um, is there a motion approved to go into executive session? So move. Is there, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We will be going to executive session at 7.45 p.m.
Is there a motion to reconvene? So moved. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, at this time, under executive session A1, there's no action. Um, on executive session A2, I'm, yeah, I'm going to make a motion. I make a motion to ratify the settlement, authorize city manager to execute any necessary documents. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And under executive session A3, who's going to make it? So move. There would have to be a motion. There would have to be a if there is a motion after uh, evaluation, uh, there would have to be a motion to enter to uh, have the city attorney uh, draft a contract for consideration for the one year as per the city manager, as per the previous terms, or if there's any modification of the previous terms, you, you would have to say that. Right. So the motion would be to go ahead and uh, and then go with another one year uh, contract. E excluding the, excluding the six, the month, six, six month, month probationary, probationary yes. period. And I would also like to, I know the, uh, the contract is uh, at 95,000. If we could increase it by five to 100,000, plus the 3%. 5,000 additional? Five additional, right, plus the 3%. Thank you. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 This meeting has been adjourned.